Hi, welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to show you how to create the side view of this hairdo. Well, let's get burning. Analyzing the hair. Before we start burning, let's analyze our reference photo. First, there is a highlight along the crown or the top of the head. This area needs to have the lightest values. The back of the hair is the area that has the darkest values. There is a part running along the side of the head. Above the part, the hair is longer and angles upward and to the right. Below the part, the hair is very short. The side of the head below the part has very short hair and the scalp is showing through. The front of the hair flips up and goes in different directions. Lastly, there is a spot near the back of the head where the hair radiates outward in different directions. Burning the hair. Begin by burning in the trace lines on the hair. I am using a shader pen tip for this. I'm holding the shader at an angle so I get thicker burn lines. The lines are about double the width of the line I would get if I was using the razor edge of the shader. Don't burn the lines really dark. For one thing, that's a bad habit to get into. For another, we want the lines to disappear into the hair, and lighter colored lines will blend in better. To mark the bottom edge of the hair, I burned a lot of single light tan lines. After you are done burning in the trace lines, then rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Now start burning in the short hair along the part near the back of the head. We're blocking in the hair, so the lines do not need to be very dark at this point. Next, block in the large shadow above the part. The shadow is fairly large so it will take several passes of the shader to fill it in. Then block in the back of the hair above the part. What I am doing is burning in the shadows first. Most of the shadows are created by using the edge of the shader to burn thin, dark lines that vary in length. Afterwards, I burn in the rest of the hair using the flat of the shader to give it color. The key is to burn all of your strokes in the direction that the hair is laying on the head. Also, add color variety to your burn strokes. Reburn over the short hair along the part near the back of the head, and then block in the lower portion along the back of the head. If needed, rotate the board when working along that edge. For the right handed people in the world, they probably will not need to rotate the board. The back of the head has the darkest values on it, so I am burning it to a brown color. Short hair covers the side of the head, and I am using a zigzag burn stroke on this area. Zigzags are nothing more than a line burned in a back and forth direction. If you prefer, just burn a lot of short, single lines instead. When burning zigzags, I have the pin tip angled, so I'm using the razor edge. This produces very thin lines. As you get further from the back of the head, more of the scalp becomes visible. Make sure to leave little gaps between your burn strokes to account for this. Also, don't burn the hair as dark. As you work, make sure to burn the hairs in the direction that they are styled. Since the hair above the part is long, I increase the length of the burn stroke. Sometimes it takes several burn strokes before the shadow and or clump of hair is long enough. Like before, I alter how much metal is in contact with the wood to change the burn width. For the shadows, I have very little metal in contact with the wood. When giving the hair color, 
I tend to use the flat of the shader, which produces a wide burn stroke. Mark the boundaries of the highlight by drawing a line around it. If you are burning on wood, use a white charcoal pencil so it will be visible. I'm using a graphite pencil because I'm burning on paper and the white charcoal doesn't show up on paper. All of the hair outside of that circle needs to be darker than the hair inside the circle. Keep in mind that we are not burning individual hairs. Instead, we are burning in locks or clumps of hair. Each lock or clump represents numerous individual hairs that are very similar in color and they angle in the same direction. Each lock or clump of hair should be slightly different in color. The thin lines represent the shadows between the locks and clumps of hair. The shadows give the hair shape. I am blocking in the dark shadows from the hairs that are sticking up. I like to burn in the major shadows first. The shadows are dark, so the adjacent hair needs to be much lighter in comparison. Also, the shadows are what give the hair shape, and they help me follow along with the reference photo. I use the shadows as landmarks to quickly determine where I'm at in comparison with the reference photo. You probably noticed I tend to burn in a couple of major shadows and then re-burn over hair that is already blocked in. This is just a personal preference, so don't feel like you have to imitate it. I am burning single short lines along the tips or the outer edge of the bangs. The tips of the hair are burned a couple of shades lighter than the rest of the hair. Then darken up the area around the tips of the bangs. Well, that would actually be the area below the tips. This will allow the different directions that the hair is styled to be seen. With the little updo section done, resume blocking in the hair and reburning over the hair to fine tune it. During the reburns, I darken the hair outside of the pencil circle. I use gradient shading as I reburn. The hair closest to the part is the darkest, and it gets gradually lighter as I near the circle. As I said before, I use the flat of the shader to create wide burn strokes that represent separate locks of hair. I use the edge of the shader to burn thin lines that create the shadows found in the hair. The shadowed lines define each lock of hair. A yellow arrow is pointing to one lock of hair on the inset photo. This lock of hair would be created by burning a band of color that is surrounded by shadows. When you no longer need the reminder of where the highlight is, then erase it with a pencil eraser. The hair above the part is now completely blocked in, so it needs to be reburned until it is brown in color. The hair below the part is only partially blocked in. From the photo analysis, we know that the hair along the part is dark. The color gets lighter the further from the part that you get. As I have been doing all along, I work on blocking in new sections of hair and then reburn over old sections. Regardless of what section I am burning on, I consult with the reference photo often. While I am not trying to create an exact replica of the photo, I do want my artwork to be a decent representation of it. That means I need to capture the major features of the hair. The major features were discussed in the photo analysis chapter. As I finish up the hair above the part, you can compare it with the reference photo and see that my rendition is similar but not exact. 
Since hair is not the focal point in portrait work, I consider this rendition to be more than adequate for the job. With the hair below the part, I am using zigzags and single lines as my burn strokes. Both burn strokes are created with the edge of the shader. Remember to let the hair get lighter in color as you get closer to the ear. This is accomplished by leaving more gaps between the burn strokes and not adding very many layers to the hair. Adding layers is just another way of saying reburning. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found the information informative. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of this tutorial along with the reference photo that I used. There is a sketch that you could use as the pattern, but for this it's such a simple thing, I highly recommend trying to make your own pattern. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.